Ako ćemo plaćati račun? Naravno. Deda, to vam je isto kao da u banci ispunjava tu pladnicu. Sva su polja ista. I jednom kad ispunite za struju, poslije menjate samo iznos i poziv na broj. I to je to. E, tata, da ponovimo. Otvoriš aplikaciju, ukucaš PIN, onda odabereš plaćanje. Pa uneseš podatke i na kraju platiš. Jednostavno lako. Unikredit. Celtic's home ground is in Glasgow, Scotland. It was founded by Irish immigrants. So our story begins in Albania. The Grand Presidential Office, Tirana. Head of State and Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency, Ilir Meta is a devoted fan. Hail, hail! He was on official business when he first encountered the boys, as Celtic fans are known. I was uh, participating in a summit in uh, Sarajevo. And uh, we were uh, with a huge delegation walking the main boulevard of Sarajevo when uh, I was hearing some noise. They were uh, Celtic fans. I didn't know that Celtic was playing that evening in uh, Sarajevo. But I knew this uh, uniform immediately. President Meta kicked off a Twitter storm by posting his encounter with the boys. Next day, such a huge uh, reaction on my Twitter and uh, uh, social media. From that moment, his Excellency has been a die-hard fan. Celtic is my team, and once you are a Celt, you are always hell hell. Celtic is known worldwide. They have supporters clubs on every continent. We are All protesting undying love for a club in a faraway league. beginning, there came a holy man, a preacher and a teacher. He saw that his parish had many poor immigrants and he was troubled. He wanted to feed the children, but how? Well, this man was Irish and imaginative. He founded a football team, charged a small entry fee and used the pennies to fund the poor children's dinner table. So Celtic was born. This is actually the man himself. This is Brother Walford, and it's a painting by the famous Scottish artist Peter Howson, and it captures quite dramatically this towering figure who stands among the plight of the poor. He had a tremendous impact from the moment he arrived in the local primary school, and he wasn't blind to the poverty, and he wasn't just accepting of it, he challenged it. Brendan Sweeney described Brother Walford as this figure who would walk through the streets of the Calton and the wains would be following him like wee ducks, wee ducklings. So you imagine that the kind of figure he was, maybe a figure of hope, even for the wee hungry wains. The immigrants who had so moved Brother Walford had fled Ireland. One million Irish starved to death when their potato crop was blighted. Another million emigrated. Celtic saved a lot of souls, and the Irish have idolized the club ever since. May 2020. This is Belfast in the north of Ireland. Celtic have won the Scottish League for the ninth time in a row. Even under coronavirus lockdown, fans can't contain their pride. The Scooter Squad, 
a familiar sight at Celtic Park, they never miss a match. The leader of the pack is known hereabouts as Wee Duff. Certainly, I could give me an actual reason for living. I had a stroke uh, about 10 years ago, and I couldn't move my arm or my legs. But one thing that kept me going was, I have to get back to Parkhead. I have to go. And I went, and I haven't stopped going. Well, this is my living room in here now, and see, everything in it has been on weight. Even my sweat is green on me. Uh, not your pictures of me over at Parkhead, but my pride and joy sits up here. The European Cup. We were the first ones to show all the other football teams harder win in Europe. We Duff is determined that nothing and no one stands between him and his trips to paradise. Celtic comes first in everything. I had a wee granddaughter and she had a baby. And we were on the date of the baptism. And I came up and I looked at her and said, well, listen, I'm not here. I said, why not? I said, we, we, we were playing heads that day. We Duff clearly subscribes to the old adage, some people think football is a matter of life and death. It's much more serious than that. That's all arranged to know when I die that this thing will be on my coffin. Fearful through and through, and that's going to be on my coffin. That's going to be a praise and joy. The city of Belfast has two tribes, and they've been bitter rivals down the ages, even in football. These are the Orangemen. They dress in maroon, and their team plays in blue, Glasgow Rangers. This is my grandson, he's three year old, and in 50 years time, I hope he will be lifting his grandson onto his shoulders, um, who will both be Rangers fans and both be proud members of the Shankill Protestant Boys Blue Band. The common denominator between these two tribes is their enduring passion. Rangers means everything to everyone within the Rangers family, and that includes the Loyal Orders, the Bond Fraternity, and everything that comes with that. At the end of the 1960s, Belfast was rocked by sectarian riots. Walls were erected to separate the Republicans from the Loyalists. Even now, two decades after peace broke out, the so-called Peace Wall divides the Catholic Falls Road from the Protestant Shankill Road. Francis Quigley is a painter. He's lived all his life on this religious and political fault line. See this fence here, it's closed every night at six o'clock. Everybody in this side uh, supports Celtic, and everybody on the other side of that fence supports Rangers. And during a conflict, this road would have been a killing zone. Hundreds killed and injured of just both sides of this, this fence. The graffiti on the Falls Road has a distinctly internationalist theme. Nelson Mandela, Palestine, Martin Luther King and climate change all jostle for space here. After a few yards of no man's land, the graffiti is very different. You'll see the, the British Army and the British Empire celebrate as they said. The Loyalists are a minority on the island of Ireland. Changing demographics means they'll soon be a minority in Northern Ireland too. The artwork on this side is inward looking. It captures a siege mentality. 
And Celtic supporters put up IRA flags, and Unions put up UVF flags at the Rangers matches. So the, the conflict that's here is carried on in, Gla in Glasgow. Elsewhere, football is seen as cathartic, war by proxy. But when Celtic and Rangers clash, Glasgow streets can seem like a battleground. Turf war sometimes breaks out on the pitch too. Since the Scottish League began in 1891, these two teams have won it over a hundred times between them. Animosity has made this derby one of the fiercest in world football. At Queen's University in Belfast, the two tribes are seen in a deeper historical context. Football is a last reserve for the expression of those 19th century sectarian identities that, that were formed in Glasgow as a result of uh, Irish migration. So Glasgow turf has become the battlefield for an Irish war. Scotland is less riven by sectarianism these days. Modern day Scotland is not at all like Belfast. You might be rooted in 19th century sectarian identities when it comes to football. Belfast is rooted in 17th century sectarian identities that it's not yet been able to cast aside in the 21st century. Mercifully, many fans enjoy a less complicated relationship with Celtic Football Club. They share a simple devotion to the beautiful game. Martin Beatty and his son Jay are regulars at the Glasgow Celtic Supporters Club in Lurgan, Northern Ireland. Celtic manager Neil Lennon grew up around here. These two fans feel a special bond with him. The club, like others around the world, is crammed with Celtic memorabilia. But there's one trophy here that means everything to the Beatty family. So this medal here, this occurred on the, um, the 11th of May 2014. Celtic had won 3-1, and at the end of the game, Neil Lennon, who used to play for this club, come over and give Jay his medal. And then Mr. Samaras, Jay's favorite player, come over and lifted Jay out of the crowd. It's a moment that changed Jay's life and our lives forever. Oh, and out came that his back hair and the beard. We thought that the only people that had actually seen that was uh, Jay and myself. We forgot about it being beamed out on the, the large screens and also around the world. News coverage and social media broadcast Jay's moment to the four corners of the earth. Over 90 million people took Jay to their hearts. Since then, he's been known as Celtic superfan. Belfast has more than its fair share of Celtic shrines. Tony Coleman's house looks quite normal on the outside. Inside is a whole different ball game. We live, breathe, walk and talk Celtic. From my, my grandfather, right through to my father, through to me, down to my son, Celtic has been in our blood. It's a birthright to become a Celtic supporter. Tony needs his football fix. So in the off season, he started his own Celtic media channel. From his garage, he broadcasts a radio talk show. And we do like Celtic uh, live Facebook broadcasts and put them on YouTube. 
and, and stream them all to different Celtic sites all over the internet. We had something like uh, 200,000 people who uh, viewed the videos. Tony loves the noisiest part of the Celtic community. They occupy the only standing section of the ground, the Green Brigade. The Green Brigade is Celtic's ultra section. A, a fantastic group of boys. They've definitely lifted the atmosphere, and that section keeps it lit, keeps the singing going, keeps the atmosphere going, even when times are down. They're there. The Green Brigade are overtly political, not always appreciated by the owners, who worry that it might be bad for business. Politics and football it goes hand in hand. If it wasn't politics in Ireland, certainly there would be no Celtic Football Club. Tony's shrine is about more than just football. There's a world view on display here. If anybody that knows about uh, Palestine, it's one of the great um, injustices of humanity. Which way the Green Brigade keep it on the agenda, flying the flags at Celtic Park. Those Palestinian flags became highly controversial when Celtic played an Israeli team, Hapoel Beersheba, in a Champions League match at Parkhead. UEFA fined the club £8,000. Incensed, the fans raised a collection. The fund quickly exceeded £300,000. The money was paid to Palestinian charities. We'll stand with the oppressed anywhere around the world. Marcin O'Muller owns newspapers in New York and Belfast. He's had his finger on the pulse of this city since he started as a cub reporter 30 years ago. We had a 30-year conflict here, and it was about anything. It was about identity. And back in the 60s, uh, it was illegal to display the Irish flag. It was really uh, verboten to display any emblems relating to Ireland. And yet despite that, Celtic had this fantastic support right across the nationalist or Catholic community of Belfast. If the Irish don't know about injustice and oppression and discrimination, then no one does. So it's absolutely appropriate that Celtic fans should be on the side of the light in all these matters. And thank God they are. Those values of inclusion, of equality, of equity, of Black Lives Matter, right up to the present day, uh, those go to the core of what we stand for as a community. And thank goodness it goes to the core of what Celtic stands for. Glasgow is a favorite destination for many of the world's top players. Messi, Ronaldo, Iniesta, and Ibrahimovic all love Parkhead for one reason. The thunderous roar of the fans. What makes this stadium different is that everyone sings. Despite playing in one of Europe's smaller leagues, average attendance at Celtic Park is almost 60,000. Their traveling fans break all records. In 2003, Celtic reached the UEFA Cup final in Seville, Spain. They were allocated just 15,000 tickets. Some 80,000 fans made the journey. Celtic lost to Porto after taking it to extra time. But the boys won fair play awards for their exemplary conduct. Opposing fans sometimes bring hostility. In October 2019, visiting Lazio fans marched through Glasgow, right arms raised in fascist salutes. The Green Brigade responded with banners celebrating the execution of Mussolini, Italy's fascist World War II leader. Trouble seemed likely when the second leg was played in Rome. November 2019, Rome has been invaded by 15,000 Celtic fans. The boys are in party mood 
boisterous and noisy, but there's no sign of trouble. Lazio fans haven't forgotten the Mussolini banners at Parkhead. Four Celtic supporters have been stabbed nearby. Celtic has taught me anti-fascism, anti-racism, and to welcome immigrants, which I am, being from an Irish background. And it's, to it's taught me to respect others and look after others who are less fortunate than ourselves. Lazio are a fantastic football club, but they have a base of fans who are very right-wing in their politics. All we came here for is a game of football, but if you don't oppose fascism, you are supporting it. The fans' high principles were matched by manager Jock Steen's lofty ambitions. In 1967, he led Celtic to the final of the European Cup in Lisbon. Big John Fallon, a Celtic goalkeeper for 13 years, was part of the 12-man squad that ran out against Inter Milan. All but one of them grew up within 10 miles of Celtic Park. John vividly remembers every detail. We come out the dressing room, and then you come into the tunnel. We're walking up and they're all looking down, you know, the gods, uh, the Italians, they're all tanned, we're all pale faces and all that. And all of a sudden, we Bertie just starts, for it's a grand old team. We all started singing. And they all sort of looked, what's going on here? <laughs> this bunch of amateurs. We showed them who the amateurs were. Inter Milan scored an early penalty, then fell back into a tight defensive shape. The forward line never came anyway, you know. But Celtic had other ideas. Wave after wave of relentless attack, the Italians had never faced such an onslaught. It was just constant, constant. We Jimmy jinking about, we Buzz Bomb, Bobby Lennox. If you'd nip in there, you'd Wally Wallace come through. You know, we just played them off the field that day, you know. Celtic were the first British team to win the European Cup. Jock Steen and his 12-man squad were immortalised as the Lisbon Lions. After the game, the fans are all in the field. Some of the players' are jer jerseys have been stripped off them, shorts, boots, and they're all running to get into the dressing room. Oh. John started life as a Celtic fan became a Celtic player, and he'll be a Celt forever. I love that dream. 2,000 kilometers away, Tirana, Albania. It's opening night for the latest outpost of the Celtic Supporters Club. President Ilir Mata is guest of honor. He's chosen this evening to share his vision. He's planning the world's greatest Celtic Huli. Very soon, we will host in Albania the World Convention of Celtic Fans. Celtic has a remarkable ability to turn dreams into reality. Jay Beatty, world-famous Celtic superfan, had a burning ambition to go to an away game. In December 2014, he shared his dream with Santa Claus. So Santa arranged with Hamilton Football Club that he could attend the stadium, and if he wanted, he could uh, maybe take a penalty. You scored a cracker goal, didn't you? Oh, yes. Sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. The, the goalkeeper uh, had his glasses on. Goalkeeper had his glasses on? Yeah. <laughs> Every clips of that it was shown on TV and then went viral again. Yeah. 
after that, we got a phone call from the SPFL to say that they were going to put Jay's goal into the goal of the month. When it was announced on TV that Jay would be going in against Michael Lustig. Wow. And uh, several other, some great goals. So when we said to Jay, like, who would we vote for? We actually voted for Michael Lustig's um, goal because Jay thought his Michael Lustig's goal was better than, um, than Jay's. Yeah. Um, Jay won with a landslide of 97%. He was then taken on to Celtic Park. Congratulations, you are January's Goal of the Month winner in Scottish football. I believe it's the first time that it's ever happened in any football league in the world. To take a little boy with Down syndrome, um, a bald head and big glasses, and to um, you know, to treat him with so much love and so much respect. No other club in the world would do that. Jay's favourite video thrills him every time. Yeah! Yeah! His very own Celtic highlights. Yeah! It's him and I, and I love him very, very much. 